Hello everyone and welcome back to the Denver Broncos franchise. Stop me if you've heard this one before, but last week we lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. 28-27 was the final, had plenty of opportunities to put the game away and we just couldn't do it. In that game, we also lost Rashad Winters for the majority of the remainder of the season. It looks like he may be back for the final two games. And how do you replace a guy like Rashad Winters who has 89 speed at the tight end position? Well, well, we've got Jay Stewart, who is a pretty quality tight end. But I'm thinking we might give Cole Langford an opportunity to at least be the tight end too. Because if we're being honest with ourselves, Langford kind of works better as a tight end than he does as a wide receiver. Because 86 speed is a little slow for a receiver, but that's pretty fast for a tight end. Langford becomes a 74 overall tight end, which is actually a true 77 because his morale is being affected by negative three. So I think with Winters out, we're going to give Langford an opportunity to be a tight end one. It gets him more playing time, and I think that he will be a bit better as a receiving tight end than Jay Stewart, who is a bit more of a blocker. And because Jerry Perry is still out, we now only have four wide receivers with Langford moving to tight end. So Dante Claxton is going to be signed off the practice squad. If we take a look at the playoff picture, you can see that the team we play today, the LA Chargers, are the seven seed currently at seven and five they have yet to have their bye week and we are on the outside looking in as for the standings in the afc here is how they look we are close with the chargers and the jets and of course during practice this week deontay canty who would have been the wide receiver three with langford moving to tight end has a shoulder strain and will miss this week's action and khalil mack has a dislocated wrist but he's a backup anyway and it doesn't stop up there free safety Justin Reed has a broken finger and will also miss today's action. So look at this injury report for the Broncos. These are all very critical players. And if you're wondering who becomes the wide receiver three with Jerry Perry out, with Deontay Canty out, with Cole Langford over at tight end, it's Daniel Truman. So the Truman brothers will be sharing the field a lot today. It's been a season absolutely riddled with injuries for the Denver Broncos, but I have a feeling we can make a run if we can just make it to the postseason. But it's about getting there, and it has to be led by this man, Dennis Colbert, against Justin Herbert. Chargers will start with the football, and we are underway here at SoFi Stadium in what could be a battle for the seventh seed in the AFC. Here comes Justin Herbert. Take a look at his stats on the season. They are very good, but not nearly as good as a guy like Patrick Mahomes we faced a week ago. 2,700 yards, 15 touchdowns to four picks. This is the first of three straight road games for the Denver Broncos after coming off a four-game homestand as Herbert will throw immediately to the former Bronco, Greg Dulcich making the grab penalty down though roughing the passer on the very first play of the day against leonard williams the chargers are of course led by quarterback justin herbert who is up to a 96 overall richard angram is their halfback a 72 overall wide receiver one is still keenan allen joshua palmer is the wide receiver two quinton johnson is the wide receiver three pretty solid receiving core and then they've got Lashawn simmons tight end of course for them is greg dulcich who we traded away to get our left guard, Zion Johnson. So we're wanting to put Herbert under some pressure today as Ankrum is in the backfield in the offset eye formation, back in motion. Hand off to Ankrum and going nowhere. Down at the 46, a loss of a yard from Eddie Jackson. It gets second down and 11. Offset eye again, and it's play action. Herbert throwing on the run, finding Dulcich, and it's ruled complete. He kept his feet in bounds, and he's to the Denver 28. A huge pickup for the Chargers. Herbert throwing on the run under pressure from Devin Bush, and I'm not certain that he did catch that, but I won't question it. First and 10 from the 28 after the big play from Justin Herbert. He's under center here, and he will fake the handoff to Ankrum, gets away from the defender, and finds his man. It's Keenan Allen down the field in front of Christian Gonzalez. First and 10 at the 10 for the Chargers. Herbert somehow getting out of pressure back-to-back -back plays. 
First and 10 from the 10, handoff, Ankrum, nowhere to go. May have lost a yard there. Second and 10 from the 10, Herbert empty set, has time to throw, stepping up. It's gonna take off to run and there's nobody even close. Touchdown Chargers on the first drive of the day and they made it look easy. Herbert celebrates with QJ and the Chargers take a seven nothing lead. So here is the Broncos offense. An offense that played super well in the first quarter against the Chiefs and then just fell apart on first and 10 from the 25. We're going to try to find the younger Truman brother, Daniel Truman, with his first reception on the day. And now it's second and five from the 30. Handoff to Spears. Jukes out one defender since Zion Johnson couldn't be bothered to block at the second level. So on third down, we bring in the big fella. It's A.J. Dillon. We'll let him run it up the gut, and he does get the first down yardage to the 39. You'll probably still see a lot of Langford at wide receiver today. He is in there in the formation subs, and I don't believe that got changed as that is somehow caught by Cole Langford over the head of Murray, the defender there, and it's first and 10 for Denver at the LA 46. First and 10 from the Chargers side of the field, and it's gonna be a carry for Tajay Spears. Not a lot of running room, pickup of three. Second and seven from the 43, play action, and Colbert will look to throw. Wants Chester Truman, but it's knocked away. Third and seven. Third down, seven to go from the 43. Colbert back to pass. He wants Langford down the field. It's intercepted by Derwin James. He gets away from Tajay Spears. This one has a serious chance to be a pick six, and it will be. Touchdown, LA. Derwin James steps in front of Cole Langford and takes it to the house. Touchdown, Chargers. And it's a 14 to nothing lead early. The collapse of the Denver Broncos here in year number four absolutely needs to be studied. We've looked so good in every game and somehow we're managing to lose a lot of them and we're on track to lose another one here. Langford though, getting involved. That's a first down to the 38. And now from that 38, we'll look to throw with Dennis Colbert. He finds Stockton who jukes out a defender and gets a bunch of extra yards for his efforts to the 34 in Charger territory. First and 10 from the 34. Back to throw again is Colbert over the middle. He wants the big man. It's Jay Stewart. And he goes down at the 12, a big pickup again for the Broncos. Nearly first and goal. But from the 12, Colbert play action. Looks to throw, wants Chester Truman in zone. He holds on, touchdown Denver. Making quick work of the new drive after the pick six. And it goes to Chester Truman in the end zone. Denver chips away at the lead, but still find themselves down 14 to seven. Last time the Chargers were on offense, they made it look really, really easy. Can the Denver defense get a stop this time? First and 10 from the 25. Herbert under pressure, throws over the middle, but incomplete. So that makes it second down and 10. Ankrum to Herbert's right, but it is gonna be a throw and it's to Quinton Johnston. He beats Dante Wake. And he gets to the 46, first down LA. I gotta say, a loss in this game makes it very unlikely for us to make the playoffs. It's a handoff, Ankrum, huge running lane, and Cameron Bynum and Dante Wake can't bring him down. Eventually, PS2 has to. He gets to the 33, first and 10 Chargers. We're having a harder time stopping this offense than the Chiefs offense. First and 10 from the 33. Fake handoff to Ankrum. Downfield swatted away, PS2. Herbert under center offset, eye formation. The fullback back off to the right. Herbert under pressure, but does get it off to Ankrum, who does not break any tackles this time. Eddie Jackson pushes him out third and seven. A stop here for the Broncos would be huge. Herbert back to pass all day to throw, finds his man, it's Greg Dulcich. First and 10 LA. Fresh set of downs nearing the end of the first. It's a handoff, Ankrum, not a whole lot of running room as Drew Sanders upends him, a pickup of two. We have yet to make Justin Herbert uncomfortable, it seems. Maybe we can do it here over the middle, intercepted by Cameron Bynum. That is such a huge interception for the backup safety, playing in place of Justin Reed, and that stops the Chargers from extending their lead. That also starts the second quarter, 
and we'll give the Broncos offense a chance to tie this one back up if they can find the end zone on this drive. Tajay Spears, can he find the edge? He can. Beats another defender with a juke and gets to the 34. A big pickup for Tajay Spears. First and 10 from the 34. Back to pass is Colbert, and he wants Jay Stewart. Has him, and it's a pickup of four. Second and six from the 38. Colbert back to pass. Wants Stockton down the field, and he beats Derwin James. First and 10, Denver. Eight for 10 for Dennis Colbert. Pass midfield. It's first down, Broncos. Spears gets the carry. Outruns one defender. Outruns another. Only Derwin to beat, but he brings him down at the 23. But another big pickup for Tajay Spears, who is currently over 10 yards a carry. A.J. Dillon checks in for a tired Spears. And we're back to pass with Colbert. And we're looking for Chester Truman, but it's punched out by Derwin James. Second and 10 from the 23. Dennis, back to pass. Has Cole Langford in zone. Touchdown Broncos. The first receiving touchdown as a tight end for Cole Langford. The six foot nine, now former wide receiver, finds the end zone in his new role. And the Broncos will tie this football game up. First and 10 from the 25 for the Chargers, who now find themselves in a tie. How quickly things can change. Ankrum on the carry, nowhere to go. Picks up three yards. 7.27 left here in the first half as Herbert is out of the shotgun. On second down, fakes to Ankrum and throws for Quinton Johnston, who jukes out PS2 and then is brought down by Dante Wake. First and 10 at the 47. Herbert completely by himself. Ankrum out wide to the left, and that is caught by Greg Dulcich, the former Bronco, continuing to punish us for trading him away. First and 10 at the Denver 35. The Chargers have had no issue moving down the field. The interception being the only real reason Denver's gotten a stop against them. It's Dulcich again, pickup of three. Under six minutes in the first half, Denver starts with the ball in the second half. Looking like the Chargers may find some more points on this drive. Herbert, Dulcich finds his man again. We just can't keep up with the tight end. Third and short situation. We have been horrific at stopping third downs, but we succeed here. I don't know if it was a missed throw from Herbert or good defense. Either way, it's fourth down and we'll likely see a field goal attempt. Five minutes left in the first half and it's Colbert out of the shotgun. The Chargers now up 17 to 14 on the Broncos. And Colbert will look to pass, goes over the middle, swatted away by Derwin James in the direction of Jay Stewart. So we go to second and 10. And this time we go to the ground and Spears nowhere to go. Third down and 11 coming up from the 24, third and 11. Colbert back to pass. Goes underneath and finds Spears who jukes out the man in the middle of the field. It was Murray again. And Spears gets the first down. First and 10 to the 42. I think Spears has kind of been slept on this season. Has not gotten enough credit for how good he truly has been. He has been elite as a runner so far this year. First and 10 from the 42. And we'll go to the little Truman brother. It's Daniel Truman. And he'll pick up eight yards. How strange it must feel to be the little brother of the best wide receiver in the NFL and be on the same team just living in his shadow. Second and two from the 50, and it's Spears on the carry, and he does get the first down yardage. First and 10 from the 46, play action. Colbert looking to throw, has time, wants to Marcus Stockton, and he makes the grab to the 26. And now we go past the two minute warning. Two minutes left here in the first half. Broncos looking like they might have some points here. So we'll get this off to Spears, but met by Joey Bosa. The block was not made, and now it's second and 12. On second down, we go to the air again. And we're looking for Jay Stewart this time. He makes the grab, finds for the first down, and gets to the 14. He did not go out of bounds, so the clock continues to move. And now it's first and 10 from the 14 for the Broncos. Back to pass. Cole Langford wide open over the middle, and he's going to be just short of another first down. But it's second and inches at the four. 40 seconds left in the first half as we look to throw, and we want... Who else? Chester Truman, in zone touchdown Denver. His second receiving touchdown on the day. His league leading, I want to say 15th touchdown on the season. Chester Truman is truly a red zone threat. 
despite only being five foot 11. 33 seconds left in the first half. It's 21 to 17 Broncos, and we do start with the ball in the second half. Herbert looking to throw, looking to run maybe, throwing way downfield for Quinton Johnson, and getting a hand on it is Quincy Walls. 26 seconds left. All of the timeouts for the Chargers. It's not like they had to throw a bomb down the field. They just chose to. They'll get this one to Quinton Johnston, and I'm assuming immediately burn a timeout they do. 21 seconds. That play got them very close to field goal territory immediately. First and 10. Herbert throws quickly. Dulcich holds on. Gets sandwiched between two Bronco defenders. There's timeout number two. From their own 48, it's second and six with 18 seconds left. And Herbert rolling, finding his man. It is caught by Ankrum, and he holds on. They burn their last timeout. I imagine they're kicking a field goal here. They are not. They want more than the field goal despite having no timeouts left. If we can make a tackle in bounds here, that would be huge. I don't know if they'd be able to get the field goal off. Herbert will just throw it away. And with nine seconds left, I imagine here comes the field goal unit. This is a very long field goal. The kick, it is up and it is just wide. It hits the post and bounces out. No good on the kick. It was about a 57 yard field goal attempt. And it'll still be 21 to 17 as we head into the half. They want me to attempt a bit of a Hail Mary. So you know what? Why not? We've got that man over there, Chester Truman. It's overthrown. Truman had a step. And we will head to halftime. 21 to 17 is your score. Dennis Colbert playing pretty well outside of the pick six. The Broncos defense has struggled a bit, but has played well enough. We'll take a look around the league. I have no hope in beating the Chiefs in the division at this point. The Raiders maybe going to get a win over a pretty good Rams team, though. Pittsburgh versus Baltimore. These are both teams to keep an eye on. The Ravens with the loss today means that we could pass them in the AFC with a win over the Chargers. And finally, the Seahawks versus the Cardinals and the Cardinals up 17 to 10. These are two teams that are not going to be in playoff contention. I personally feel that getting the ball to start the second half is such a huge advantage and we seem to always fail to capitalize on it. Can we do it today against the Chargers? Spears going to get a really good carry to start the drive and it's going to be good enough for a first down. He's already to 61 yards on the day. On first and 10 from the 36, we go to the air. And we'll find Daniel Truman this time, and he gets to the 48. It's another first down for Denver. How are you guys feeling about Daniel Truman getting more involved? I'm sure you'll love to see it. I know he's a fan favorite on the channel. First and 10 from the 48. Go to Spears on the ground. Big blitz, though. Only one yard gained. Second and nine. Colbert to pass. And finds his man. It's Cole Langford. Gets to the edge and then is laid out at the 42, but does have another Denver first down. Slow and steady is certainly winning the race right now. First and 10 Broncos. As we'll look to throw, that one is intercepted in the direction of Demarcus Stockton. Colbert, can he stop the touchdown? No, he can't. It's the second pick six thrown by Dennis Colbert on the day. It's Asante Samuel Jr. who gets the pick and takes it to the house again. So not only is it a two-pick day for Dennis Colbert, who has been playing very well of late, but it's two pick sixes. That one is entirely on me as the player. I meant to do a lob pass. I instead did a bullet pass, and it just went straight to Asante Samuel. And now we're in kind of a crappy situation. And speaking of crappy, incomplete on first and ten. So on second and 10, we'll go to the air again, and we'll get it to Spears this time. Not good enough for a first, third and one. Two pick sixes could very well be the difference between a win and a loss today. Third and one, Roshan Johnson gets the carry, and he'll get the first down before going out of bounds at the 43. First and 10 from the 43, and it's Tajay Spears getting the carry, tries to cut it back up the middle, but only gets three yards. On second down, we'll go back to the ground, and Spears going to get a decent carry this time. That's good for five yards, and that sets up a third and two. Third and two from the 50. Spears gets the carry, falls forward, and gets the first down yardage. Very clutch first down there. Now on first and 10 from the 47, we go to the air, and we're looking for Cole Langford, who makes the grab, and 
maintains possession through the contact. Third and five. Colbert out of the shotgun, back to pass. Has Spears underneath, and he's got another first down. He's been important through the air today as well as on the ground. From the 34, it's first and 10, and it's another carry for Tajay Spears. Can't juke out that defender, gets five. Now we go to second and five from the 29, and Colbert is back to pass. Going to Spears again, finding his man, and he'll get near the 10. In fact, they'll call him down at the 10. Not quite goal to go. First and 10 from the 10. Colbert, play action. Will look to throw, has his man in zone, touchdown Chester Truman. The third receiving touchdown for Chester on the day, and the Broncos will retake the lead. This is how the first drive should have ended. Instead, the pick six makes this game very, very close. Now it'll be 28 to 24 when the Chargers take back over. 2.26 left in the third quarter as the Chargers find themselves back down by four. Herbert will fake the handoff. Actually, it's just a handoff to Ankrum, who does break out of a couple tackles and gets to the 34. Second and one from the 34. Offset eye formation. It is actually a throw from Herbert this time, but it's dropped by Josh Palmer. So a third down and one situation. Broncos defense looking for a stop. Justin Herbert under pressure and down he goes. Devin Bush, who had a sack a week ago, gets another one today. And it's fourth and ten for the Chargers, who will punt this ball away. Denver with an opportunity to take a two-possession lead. Colbert back to pass, wants Jay Stewart and has him. Holds on through the hit a pickup of eight. On second and two, on what might be the final play of the third quarter, Spears going to get a good carry here. Tries to juke out Derwin, but it does not work out. First down, though, to the 36. Ten minutes left to play. The fourth quarter has officially begun, and the Broncos have the ball to start. And it's Spears on the carry. He'll get two yards up to 88 on the day. Second and eight from the 38, Spears gets another carry. Great blocking on the edge from DeMarcus Stockton, and Spears turns it into a first down with a juke of Derwin James. First down from right around midfield will keep it on the ground. Langford can't get the best block. That does push Spears over the century mark, though. Under eight minutes remaining, second and eight from the 49. It's going to be Spears on the carry of Zion Johnson. Holds that block for a second longer. Spears is probably going long. And we've got a false start here on third and nine. That's going to back us up even a little bit more. Here we go. Third and 14. Colbert back to pass. Chester Truman is open on the right side. We know about his elite ability to get first downs. No. Short. Joey Bosa was back there in coverage and makes a huge open field tackle. Fourth and three. The Chargers will start from their own 10, down by four with six and a half minutes to try to add points. Devin Bush in the backfield stops Ankrum cold. Makes it second and 10 from the 10. Herbert out of the pistol. Will hand off to Ankrum again. Has nice blocking brought down by PS2 before he can get the first. Third down. Third and short has not been our friend this season. Can it be this time? Under center is Herbert. They do not go to the ground here. But finding Dulcich wide open on the right side to the 27, it's first in 10 LA. Offset eye formation, under five minutes left to play. Herbert moves back over to the right and will look to throw under pressure. Trying to find his man, it's Keenan Allen, PS2 is beat. And he's to the 45, first down chargers again. Make it second and 10. Herbert's in the shotgun, Ankrum is to his left. But he will be looking to throw. And nearly intercepted by PS2. I didn't even see him there. And now it's third and ten. A great play by the best player on this team. Patrick Sertan the second. Forces a third down and ten. Herbert, play action. Throws immediately. Keenan Allen, it's punched out by PS2. Three plays in a row that he's involved. And it forces a fourth down for the Chargers. Under four minutes remaining. The Broncos with a chance to burn some clock. Spears is going to get the carry here. Goes up the middle and gets three yards. Second down and seven. And we'll go to the air with Colbert here. Langford is wide open. He'll fight for some extra yards, and it makes it a third and one. Third and one is more like third and a half yard. Under three minutes left to play now here in the fourth. 
as we will hand it off to Roshan Johnson. He gets the first down and a little bit more. Hold on to the football, he does. And it's a first down at the Denver 41. That brings us to the two minute warning. A first down would pretty much ice the game. Broncos couldn't do it a week ago against the Chiefs. Can they do it against the Chargers? Handoff, A.J. Dillon, only one yard gained. Second and nine from the 42. Handoff, Roshan Johnson running room to the right side, and he gets the first down to the 39, and that should do it. Denver should get the victory here against the Chargers despite their best efforts with the two pick sixes to lose. There you have it. The Denver Broncos get a much-needed bounce-back victory against a division rival that was currently holding the seven seed in the AFC playoff picture. The Chargers drop to seven and six. The Broncos go to seven and five, and I think we'll likely have that seventh seed if we look at the playoff picture next week. This is a game the Broncos honestly should have dominated. We played like the way better team, but those two pick sixes from Dennis Colbert just really gave the Chargers a ton of hope. Because if you look at Colbert's numbers, he played incredibly well today. Just those two interceptions killed his stats. 27 of 35, which is 77% completion percentage, 318 yards, four touchdowns to the two interceptions. Herbert played pretty poorly today. 15 of 25, 190, no touchdowns and a pick. In terms of rushing, Tajay Spears got 20 attempts, 103 yards, but no touchdowns. Roshan also had a very good day in his three rushes. Cole Langford, seven for 82 and a touchdown in his first appearance as a tight end, which is excellent. Spears, five for 50. He was super involved on the ground, in the air, you name it. Jester Truman, five for 47, but did have three touchdown receptions. Jay Stewart was more involved. 4 for 48, Stockton 3 for 67, and Daniel Truman 3 for 24. Defensively, PS2 led in solo tackles with 3. Total tackles was Eddie Jackson with 7. Devin Bush, Dante Wake, and Eddie Jackson all had TFLs, and Devin Bush had the lone sack with Cameron Bynum having the lone interception. Chester Truman gets an upgrade after that game. He is a true 91 overall, playing up to a 92. It's really just at this point release and medium route running that he is lacking. When I keep going into deep threat for him, I know he can get medium route running from this. It's awareness, one catch in traffic, one deep, one medium, and two release. That is a big time upgrade for Chester Truman. With that victory, the Broncos do now find themselves as the seven seed. The seven seed is not the most ideal seed to be because it means if we can manage to beat the Bengals, we are guaranteed to play the Kansas City Chiefs, and that is a team we are just incapable of beating, it seems. And the next matchup comes again against a team that is also in playoff contention and has dropped to 500. That's the New York Jets. If you're curious, the Jets are quarterbacked by Zach Wilson. Aaron Rodgers retired after season number one and here in year four, they still have Zach Wilson who is now considered a bridge quarterback. So a victory for the Broncos that had absolutely no right to be as close as it was. And now we're into the final stretch of the regular season. Five more games to go to see if we can earn a playoff spot. Right now we're in, so if we can win out, we are certainly in. Unfortunately, no way to win our division at this point. The Chiefs with their 12th win on the season are now 12 and one, and at worst would finish 12 and five. At best, we can finish 12 and five. And the Chiefs, of course, have the divisional tiebreaker beating us twice already this season. So the Chiefs here in week 14 have already clinched the AFC West title. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I do truly appreciate the continued support. If you find yourself coming back on the regular and you aren't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that sub button for me. It does help me out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next episode where we'll take on the New York Jets.